And as always, I have a guest commentator in the studio with me for the rest of the program who will offer her perspective on the news and talking points of the day. And the journalist, political affairs commentator and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku is here. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Let's get straight to it. You had um, at the outset the presidential candidate of the SDP full of ebullience mm -hmm. and uh, confidence and so on. What do you make of it? I mean, he was very articulate and, and confident. Mm. Um, he understands the issues. He is determined, you know, to use your word. Um, he's relatively young and uh, he's everywhere, you know, thumping and trying to uh, make his, his party known. Um, there are 18 candidates, 18 presidential candidates. He's not the only one that is less known. Mm. Um, you know, I reckon that they have followers. There are people who think that some of these candidates have excellent profiles, great profiles, good experiences, and can contribute to nation building in Nigeria. The question though is, is there really a chance or a path for them to make the presidency? Mm. Like, what is the mathematical pros and cons for a candidate like him to win the presidency? And he has a sense of humor. Mm. He, he did say when you asked him, why not join forces? with other candidates or other parties. He said, they should, they should come yeah, and join absolutely. me. And then I when I win, cool. yes, when <laughs> I win, we, we can work together. Mm. Well, the thing is, um, everybody has, has you know, the right to run mm. for, for office. No, not everyone will win the presidency. The point is, at the end of the day, after the elections, we should be working together because it's the same country. Mm. And if you have the same vision and the same goal, then it, it's, it's more important to band together. Absolutely. And as somebody said, I mean, it, it's also a way to identify people who have potential and, and who have something to offer to the country, just in case they're thinking of a sort of government of national unity and expanding beyond their, you know, the, whatever party wins the election. I did think about that. Some mm. of these candidates, do they really believe deep down that they have a chance or this is like a bargain, a platform for them to bargain after whoever yeah, you know, gets a, that's into, a, that's into a good the point. office. That's a good point. Let's turn to Dr. Nicholas Westcott, who is a former British diplomat. He was an ambassador in several countries in Africa and obviously understands the lay of the land. He's now the, um, the, the uh, director of the Royal African Society in London, which is a very well-respected um, uh, African society there. And uh, he was giving his assessment from an international perspective of the Nigerian uh, elections and the whole sort of history and the process. What do you make of what he said? He's, he knows Nigeria quite well mm. from his assessment and analysis. However, he hasn't said anything that we do not know already. Mm. He touched on jihadist aggression, talked on, um, touched on the deep disappointment uh, against President Muhammad Buhari by many, even his core supporters. I uh, talked about unemployment issues, the economy in general. We already know these problems. Mm. He understands them. He's, he tried to lay, lay out, you know, that explanation that this is why a lot of middle-class Nigerians are leaving. That is where I want to uh, dwell on. I think it's important when he says that the middle-class Nigerians that are leaving is not the solution for the country. You know, he's very correct. The thing is, though, when people are in survive, survival mode, they will flee to wh wherever. Well, that's all they think about. Exactly, wherever they think mm. that they would, you know, their, their bread will be buttered. And it is a loss for Nigeria. It can be a loss. It, it can also be something good. I mean, we have many Nigerians that travel abroad for school. Um, they come back with their expertise, with their knowledge, mm. uh, with their experiences. That is good for the country. The Chinese do that. The Indians do that. However, when you look at the country today, it's like everyone is really running not to go and get something to come back to add to Nigeria, but to just flee and never come back. Mm. It is something that should concern our leaders. It should concern the government. It is our cup of tea to make Nigeria to work, mm. to make Nigeria to function. Because if Nigeria does, all the diaspora we have can come back mm. and contribute no, absolutely. to the country. But it's very interesting listening to Dr. Westcott because you, you get the a, a sense of 
the fact that of the importance of the Nigerian elections to the international community and the fact that people like that are following it quite sort of uh, minutely, you see what I mean, or all the way through. I mean, it, it just suggests that, you know, the world is watching this country and we've got to sit up for this election. Well, Charles, Nigeria is a powerhouse mm. that is punching below its weight. I mean, we're a powerhouse and that's not a, good, a powerhouse. That's a good description. I, I yeah. mean, this is the largest country in Africa. Every four in every one in four black persons mm. is a Nigerian. Absolutely. And you have extremely talented people. Look at our music industry. Look at our film industry. All over, we're doing well outside the country. When mm. it comes to our country, then talent looks like, you know, it diminishes because the setup, the, the structure of the governance doesn't, um, uh, doesn't support or encourage people. Mm. So people are watching. If Nigeria takes off, it would be excellent for the African continent. I mean, in West Africa alone, we're more than 70%. Absolutely. So it is important. It is, a, it, is, it is an important country, not for the West specifically, for them as well, because of mineral resources mm. and all of that. But it is also important for the Absolutely. African continent. And on that note, I want to thank you very much indeed. Uh, Dr. Constance Ikoku You're is welcome. the journalist, political affairs commentator, and Arise News analyst. That's it for this edition of Arise Primetime. Join us again tomorrow. From me and the entire team here in Abuja, Lagos, and London, bye-bye and thank you for watching.